start. All right, hello and welcome to the next next hour. Um, yeah, the stream will start right now. Um, should be live now. Um, yeah, so one of the things, uh, if you wanna, well, if you wanna ask a question, join the meeting. Uh, you can ask via voice or chat, um, or also just listen in. Feel free to. Um, but also, we are gonna try to find a new time for the next hour. So this week and next week will still be on Tuesday, 19 CEST, but the next one on is going to be on Thursday, 17th of August. And if you want, if you are interested in joining the next hour, please vote in this poll, and then we'll pick the most voted option. Uh, so I'll announce the new time in the next uh, next hour in one week from now. But yeah, that out of the way. Um, we have uh, this question, which was opened in the issue tracker last week. Uh, we don't have anyone in the meeting right now who wants to ask a question. So I think we'll take a look at that. And so the uh, it references here the, uh, I think is that the, I think that's originals, the original yeah. Nix thesis. Yeah, so if you're well, if you're interested in into kind of looking at how Nix started, uh, it was this PhD thesis by Ilko. I got to say, I never read it myself, but I heard it's it's very interesting still, even if it's um, how how old was that? Uh, oh, that's it's not. <laughs> I think that's Ilko's birthday, um, but it it must have been like more than twenty years ago by now. Um, but yeah, so feel free to read that. Um, but yeah, it references a, a kind of section here that um, right we can we can cache things on the kind of term level. Um, the current evaluation cache never forgets the evaluation of result of any term. Um, and so I think on the one side, I'm not sure if that refers to to thunks or if it refers to an actual uh, um, uh, kind of uh, like uh, a <laughs> cache on the on the disk. Uh, if it if we talk about thanks, uh, I I don't I wouldn't count that as an evaluation cache, uh, but that's kind of how thanks work. So if we go into a a next REPL here and let's so how do we even know if something evaluated? We can do a a trace. Let's, for example, do a, we'll set a, a variable, um, x equals 10, or let's set x equals to built-ins.trace. Now let's do evaluated and 10. And so now the first time we get it, it does evaluate, but the next time it doesn't. And so that's the kind of thunk working. So whenever you have a kind of variable declaration, so that's in a let x equals, 10, for example, or also in attribute sets. So if you do this, um, the, the same thing happens. Um, also lists, uh, so like, like this. And these are really, um, actually, like this. And these are really the three options for caching things on the thunk level. Uh, and let me actually just demonstrate the thunk one as well. So let's do y equals built-in stuff trace. Uh, let's just do eval of y. Let's do that 10 as well. So let's say we declare this and say this is address and then address.y. The first time it does trace, the next time it doesn't. So all the uh, a thunk is created for each of the attributes. So the right hand side of here. Um, right, and that, that gets only evaluated once. Uh, so underneath what it kind of does, it stores an environment and an expression, so it stores this expression here, the built-in slot trace, and the all the variables that the expression needs. So in this case, it, it doesn't really need anything. It might store the built-ins here, though. Um, and so once it accesses that value, it evaluates the expression it stored with the environment. So it has access to built-ins, um, right? And then it stores that in the value instead of the the, the thunk. And that's how kind of it works. Uh, let's also do list. So list uh, equals uh, let's do built in stop trace 10 uh, or eval uh, first alum. Let's also make this a 10. 
And so now, up to now, nothing was printed, but then we do built in start elm at list zero and something gets printed and the second time it's not. And yeah, these are the only three ways in which you can kind of create thanks in Nix. Um, there's actually one more way. Um, actually, I, I wrote an article on this in the Nixos wiki uh, here, Nix evaluation performance. And currently it only has one section. This should probably be in the Nix manual or, or somewhere, or Nix tutorial somewhere. But this explains in fairly good detail when exactly thanks get created. Actually, we have um, two more ways in which thanks can get created. So let ins, attribute sets, lists, and uh, then function application also uh, does that. And then we have like a, an odd case of default variables in destructured attribute arguments. But yeah, let, let's, so let's, so that, that is thanks that exists still today. And so here, all these are stored forever. These thanks never get evaluated a second time. Um, but I feel like this might not be, uh, well, it, it might be, I don't, I'm not sure. But let's also go into like other ways in which Nix caches evaluation and, and in particular, the disk cache. Um, so right, if we exit here and re-enter the Nix REPL. Sorry, I mean, but do you, d does it cache the uh, expressions that you type into REPL or does it only cache? Like, yeah, if you repeat the same expression, it is not cached, right? Uh, it does cache the next REPL. So next REPL kind of starts a next kind of session in the background. And so it, whenever you declare a variable, a variable like this, oh my, and now everything broke. Um, why this? Oh, I think my keyboard is, yeah, okay. So yeah, whenever you type a variable, it kind of adds the variable to the scope of the next REPL and that's built in kind of into Nix. I'm not sure if we can print the current scope just here. I don't think so. You but yeah, so it's, debugger. yeah, the debugger has, has that. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's integrated into Nix. And so you can think of this as just being in a let in statement. No, yeah. I mean well, you repeat the same expression, it will be a new thunk, right? Oh, yeah. So if we, so, right, if we did, did like this, 10, and then, uh, well, then I guess this. And, I mean, yeah, we, we can do this, and it does it again. Uh, so it kind of redefines this every time. Or, yeah, if we do this, this creates a new kind of evaluation every time so it doesn't it doesn't create any thanks for this so it's beneficial if you have like a list of set of the same elements it's better to uh, bind them and then repeat ah them. yeah for example access instead of, instead of uh... yeah yeah that's a good point so uh, let's say uh, we need to create uh, or let's say we have a function and this takes an integer and it creates a an integer to string i string so f zero integer zero okay uh, but now you want to fill a list with uh, like 10 times the same number so we could do it like this uh, or let's say uh, let's import lib so let's say lib import next package is lib and then do lib dot range I guess, um, yeah, sure, range 0 to 10. All right, and now let's do a map over that. And well, we don't, we have the integer here, we don't really want to use it. Um, well, let's say f of just 0. Okay, uh, well, now I need to, I want to demonstrate how this evaluates it multiple times. So I'm going to add a built in stuff trace here, evaluated. Um, and let's say evaluated a uh, two string string i. So we know which number it evaluated. And now we can see well, it kind of prints the traces and the list interleaved, but yeah, it evaluates it multiple times. However, if we do a let uh, kind of r equals f0, so we 
create a thunk in advance and then use this multiple times in here, we only have a single trace. So that's, uh, yeah, there is a, a general kind of recommendation to move the let in statements as far out as possible. That most, that's not always a good idea. Um, sometimes it can be that uh, the the expression in here that wouldn't need to get evaluated, but by moving it outside, you have to allocate one more sync. But this is getting a bit detailed, I think. Um, yeah, I think let's let's move on from this a bit. Um, this is right into kind of on disk caching of Nix. Um, so there's one evaluation. Uh, there's two different evaluation caches uh, that I know of uh, for Nix the on disk evaluation caches, and one of them is the per file cache. So let's do let's go into Nix hour and this is Nix hour number thirty eight. Hope so. So let's say we have, right, it's nix file caching. And so let's do a value.nix file. Let's do a built in stop trace just to see when this is evaluated. So built in stop trace file um, is evaluated. Now let's do a 10 as well here. And now let's go into next REPL and do import value.nix file is evaluated, and if we do that again, nothing is evaluated again. Even though we, we have a separate import statement here. And this happens, like, you, you can do this as many times as, as you want. So we can have a default on next here. And let's say we do, uh, let's do like a equals import value.nix and b equals import value.nix and now nix uh, instantiate eval like this and strict and yeah we can see only one trace is printed so this is a cache i don't know why i have let in here so this is a cache that goes from files to values so well actually files values i think i think that's right so for every file it for that file path, it stores the resulting value. And so it doesn't have to evaluate it again. But this only works at the kind of like top level. So let's say we have, we, we make this modular and say, let's have a function which takes an i and returns the trace file is evaluated with integer to string i. All right. And let's see what happens there. So let's do import value and then uh, we're gonna pass an i, so this is a zero and we pass a zero again. And as you might expect, this doesn't work uh, because I made a mistake here, which is, oh, forgot the colon, very nice. So yeah, this evaluates it multiple times, uh, but that's just, I mean, the the, file value cache is still there but in this case the value.nix file maps to a function so the function itself is being cached or let's set signal this as function but functions right you can evaluate functions many times but the the body of the function is not being evaluated when you when you do that and so yeah on that level it doesn't work but so th there is kind of a tip here if you uh, have like a an expensive computation that you need to do and you know it's only needed need it once and you don't have any context you need for this, put the computation in a let in at the top of the file, not inside a function body. So we can also demonstrate this here and say, um, for example, let uh, expensive computation or exp, let's just make that. And let's do something like uh, built in start fold L and then accumulator and then let's do element and then hack plus L and then let's do a, let's just do a string and we can make a string that's really long. That, that takes a lot of time because it's kind of quadratic in runtime. So range, uh, well actually lib.range, that's a bit 
we can't use this here. That's, I guess, somewhat of a problem. Um, although we could import lib here. Let's do that. That should be fine. Next package is lib and lib.range. Uh, we go from zero to, let's say, like 10,000. All right, now we have here the, the number and then we do a two string on that and then let's make it a dash so we can see what it is. Okay, and now the, the result here, let's say, let's still do the trace, evaluate it, but now we actually return the string. Sure, so we return the string. And uh, well, let's, let's put the lib in here for now. So this is what you might do. And actually the i, let's use this to, to parameterize this i. Well, actually then we couldn't do the expensive calculation without i anymore. So let's, let's not do that. Um, but yeah, so now we have just the i. We don't even use the i here. Uh, we, we can maybe do evaluate it to string i. All right, and this is a static expensive calculation. Um, now let's go to the default next. I should really open two windows here like this, or let's do it like this. Next R38. All right. And now let's do value zero. Okay. Uh, so we evaluate this and we get the really long string. Uh, I guess we can see the trace above, but how we can notice that it does evaluate it twice is if we just increase this by, by a bit, by like 10 times. Okay, now we can see it takes a really long time. I hope this doesn't take too long. Oh, there it is. So it takes like five seconds to evaluate this. All right, but if we put the let in above here, put everything up here. All right, uh, let's keep the eye, even though we don't really need it. Let's try this again. And gotta wait for it once. And it's done. So we didn't have to wait a second time for it. Yeah, and so this is, uh, right, this, uh, this is fairly useful if you really have these kind of static computations. Um, and I guess you could also, so right, let's say, I guess this is a bit of a bit of a hack, but let's say you want to parameterize this. Um, so let's say we want to parameterize this and then can make it work for, for an I. So let's do an I in front here and let's say, right, we want range from zero to I. Okay, and now this of course doesn't work. Uh, we saw this before. Let's make this a, a bit smaller as well, like uh, 10,000. All right, uh, well, it does it twice. Let's do 2,000. Okay. Uh, but yeah, a, a hack would be to say, let's create a value like this, <laughs> value 20,000. Now in here, we just do import value.nix 20,000. So it still has to be static in here, but at least we can reuse the, the function in there. So now instead of importing value here directly, we import value 2000. and then evaluate this and well, should only happen once. Uh, but yeah, of course you, you haven't really gained anything much from this. It still has to be a static value based on the file. But it can also just bind it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be an alter alternative. So let's say, let's make it three so we can see it a bit more clearly. So this, it's do it twice, but yeah, now we can, we can also use thanks to only do it once in this case x equals this and then a equals x and b equals x and then we get the thank cache um yeah um oh and actually yeah I, I made a mistake here this is not a persistent cache this is also just procession um yeah let's try misspoke uh but yeah so this works. It's not well known that this cache exists at all, so I'm happy I could show it here. Uh, but yeah, now now let's go to the real on disk cache, and that only started with uh, with flakes. So flakes started adding a uh, well, it enforces pure evaluation, and because of that, it can more easily add a 
uh, at a on disk cache. Uh, let's try this with a nectar flake. All right, so start. Uh, I should maybe use templates at some point, but for now I'm just gonna do it manually. Um, next packages, yeah, let's next packages and let's try caching the hello evaluation. Uh, probably most Flake users are already kind of familiar with this. Um, I'm not because I don't use Flakes that often. Packages.x60 Linux dot, uh, hello equals next packages dot oh, and then the system. I'm not gonna Legacy. use oh uh, packages oh or legacy packages. Oh maybe the probably the other way. Oh no. Okay. Let's let's try it like this. So flake and then next build. Uh, hello. Uh, no such file, right? We need to add it. And uh, next uh, no, next build. Alright, let's wait for this to finish. I am using the next packages without a with an input here, so it uses the one from the next registry. Which you can see like this, next registry list. Yeah, so this uh, by default it uses uh, next packages unstable, the unstable channel as pushed as branch to the next packages repo. All right, now we evaluated hello, and now let's try this again. And it finishes instantly. I'm not sure why it did it another time there. Um, oh, I guess it might have changed because of the result. No, that shouldn't happen. But yeah, so this finishes pretty much instantly. Uh, that's the evaluation cache working. Uh, you can't really hook into that manually, so you can't like tell it to cache something else other than the flake attributes here. But let's let's look a bit more into how that actually works. And the kind of main clue I have for that is that. Uh, well, the cache is on disk. In particular, it's in the cache directory, or dot .cache, then in Nix. And so, right, we can see the eval cache version four, version five. Apparently, three, pre three previous versions existed. But let's look at the latest one. And when was this updated? What is the date today? Uh, the 1st of August. Well, not sure if that's actually the date, the update date of the directory or the files within it. 12th of May, uh, that's, oh, no, apparently version 4 is used here. Maybe I used version 5 in a future next version. Okay, let's look at version 4. And yeah, we have a whole bunch of SQLite databases in here. Um, where is the one we just created? Uh, let me do a ls created. Okay, here. So journal file, I'm not a database expert, but I guess that's probably useful. I'm just gonna do a, an SQLite 3 here. So SQLite 3 allows you to just look at the database. And I know some commands, so we can look at the schema here. It's a useful one. And we can see kind of what there is. There is only one table, attributes, it has names. So let's, let's just query everything to a select star from attributes. That's a, that's a bit too verbose. Um, what if I make this a bit smaller? No, that's still pretty bad. So let's just do a parent name type value. Okay, that's that's readable, like this. Um, and I'm not sure if I want to like fully figure this out, but I think there is some kind of the parent represents the kind of hierarchy of like a recursive set of attributes. And so, I mean, let's look at the hello one. So hello has node 17 as a parent. And actually these are not, uh, I don't have the ID here. Hmm. Maybe there is ID column. Uh, was there? Oh, no, quit. Schema, uh, there was value context primer primary key, mm, there's no ID here. Parent name is the primary key. But yeah, um, let's look at what exactly it caches here. 
Um, so it caches uh, packages, exiting hello, okay, legacy packages, packages, and it goes down into the type. Okay, that's good to see. So we have, uh, if we go into the next world, type derivation. If we go to next hour 38, flake, and go into like next eval, and then let's do, uh, can we load it directly from here? I'm not sure. Flex30 does not provide attribute default. Oh, uh, next wrapper. Wanted to do that. So LF, let's use the load flake one. Uh, that is, I mean, entire of, the entirety of flakes is experimental, but with LF you can load a local flake into the shell. Now we can access the outputs and see what's up here. So outputs, packages, x64, hello. And now we have the type here, which is derivation. I did notice that it didn't seem to cache this value actually. It took some second, like some milliseconds to evaluate. Um, so maybe maybe it's not hooked into the next REPL. That could be. Um, but yeah, I, I suggest if you're, yeah. I suggest if you're interested to look more into that. I mean, it's internal, but um, if you're interested, feel free to look into that. Um, I guess in the, well, yeah, you might need to dig into the next source, how exactly it works. And honestly, I don't know. I don't think there is any specification anywhere about how exactly the cache works. And it might still change over time. Um, but from, from this, it looks like it caches the attributes in a kind of recursive fashion. Maybe we could do an experiment and say, let's do something like, foo.bar.bass.qx equals 10. And um, actually, yeah, what what happens with the cache if I update this? I guess it probably creates a new one. So if I do nix, let's go nix our flake, nix eval, and we do foo bar bass qx. Okay, it did that. And now in the cache directory, is there a new one? Nix eval cache before. And by creator, yeah, it creates a new one. Let me just move this out of the way. Um, yeah, so it creates a new one, this one here. Uh, what is in this one? I guess it might just be select from attributes. So foo bar bass, uh, I guess it might, no, hello, it doesn't seem to be cached actually. Okay, I guess, what if we do now a next build hello? And now look at this again. Oh yeah, now it changed. And I don't want to do everything here, parent uh, name, uh, what was there? Type and value, value. Yeah, okay, now it's kind of filled out more parts. And also, what if we do nix eval hello.meta? Okay, now look at it again. And uh, nothing changed, that's a bit weird. Does it not recurse too far into it maybe? Could be that it stops recursion at the, at the derivation level. That's actually also how nix packages how next packages kind of works. Uh, I mean, let's look at this here. Uh, in next packages, there is this uh, well notion if you do nix and quite the kind of uh, old command, but still uh, stable actually. Uh, if you do this, you will find all the packages in next packages. I I think this shouldn't take too long actually. Let, let's leave this running for a bit. But yeah, if you do this, it, it has to somehow recurse into the things you expect it to recurse into. And how do you signal that you want to recurse into something? Uh, next packages, this works. Oh, it's done. So let's let's just, I mean, we can see it right here. They wrote packages. So it recursed into an attribute set, um, but it didn't recurse into like the meta attributes of, of these derivations, or I hope it didn't. 
it has to stop somewhere. Um, yeah, and especially, if, let's look at this. Uh, if we do next eval next packages, so we are in next packages now. Oh, um, no, next, not next eval, next REPL. Keep confusing this. So next REPL, and now let's look at packages dot packages dot packages, and that all exists. Um, so packages is recursively contains itself. Um, and all the packages are in there. So let's do like add your names. We can do that. Uh, yeah, and then there's also things like packages cross, which is a bit more useful than just packages dot packages. Uh, but that also contains all the packages in a actually cross. There is a the platform. Let's use like unknown Redux. Uh, but yeah, all of them are in here as well. So we have hello. We have all of them. And so how, do, how does NextEnv know not to recurse into these, but to recurse into like SPCL packages? So that's done using an attribute on these. So if we go to SBCL packages, for example, there is the recurse for derivations. Recurse uh, for derivations. Yeah, here it is. So this attribute exists for SBCL packages. It's set to true. While for packages itself, well, it exists, but it's false. And probably for packages cross as well. Yeah, this doesn't exist at all here. So yeah, NixEnv and some other tools, Hydra as well, I believe, uses this to kind of discover all of the packages. And so it's, how do you set this uh, in Nix packages? You can find examples of this in the all packages file. Um, actually, if you search for just recurse for derivations, you won't find anything. Uh, and that's because the kind of function is named differently. It's, it's called recurse into address. Defined in lib, apparently. And so recurse into address, you can find this a couple times. Oh, it's, was there some docs here? Oh, there's also don't recurse into address. Um, yeah, feel free to read if you're interested. But yeah, so in here we can see .NET Core packages. These are recursed into, and so recurs into address really just adds this recurse for derivations attribute and sets it to true. And I guess SBCL packages must also be, yeah, recurs into address. That's how it works. Um, yeah, maybe also just to kind of, because it's it kind of came up here, how how does it work that we have packages dot packages like where where is that defined and i guess it's not like we could we might see it in here as well i mean here we do have well this file is a bit messy but we have packages here which contains the the kind of result of the fixed point so that's self typically this would be called self mostly if we did this almost nothing would break i tell you um, but yeah, packages, we, we might see an inherit packages here. Um, inherit packages? No, we don't. Um, so where does it come from? Let's use the built-ins.unsafe get attribute trick packages, and we search for packages in packages itself. We can see it's in the stage.nix file. So let's open that, packages, top level, stage.nix. And uh, it was on line 135 135 and here it is oh and apparently packages host target oh i'd have to look this up in the manual what this exactly is i guess this should be hmm, the normal packages pkg's host target i mean yeah we could uh also figure that out pkg's host target oh okay that's that's nice so apparently that's just self but without recursing into the packages so that's actually good i i actually don't think this would be necessary because the default for recurse for derivations is false and i mean well it should be um at least that's how nix and should implement it and let's let's look at the source code real briefly i'm going to like nix env um or let's just search for recurs for derivations in here. And yeah, we can indeed find this in Nix. Uh, get DRVs, we have eval, we have search. I think it's this one. Recurs for derivations. 
and we're getting into the source code here which i not a big fan of but yeah it it, it says uh if uh, the attribute is found this is a kind of a roundabout way of doing that you make it a boolean error when it doesn't exist i think or no error when right add some more error context um right and the boolean is actually true then it does something so actually i believe we could just like get rid of this and it wouldn't really change anything uh let's try this let's see if nix and still works it does take a bit too long in my taste i'm gonna read chat for a bit <laughs> yeah yeah um just about the eval cache being v5 um currently my version is mix and what is it mix and touch version 215 one i might have used to 16 at some point 217 is already released i believe but yeah we can see mix and still completed just fine um so yeah this apparently isn't maybe this that's for the cross packages like ah yeah includes themselves right that could be yeah with fallback hey jason public um with fallback where is that okay it sets it here as well separately um but even that like it should be false by default um so i yeah i i don't think that's necessary but i guess it doesn't hurt either um so well we can we can leave it there yeah uh is there any any questions about the the things i just talked to how did i end on this that sounds like a no um okay so maybe um let's briefly go back to here um right next package has grown huge evaluating it doesn't feel oh yeah an evaluation like performance how do you how do you make uh, like how do you debug things like evaluation performance and there is the most useful thing in my experience is nix uh, show stats so let's make a, a small example where i can demonstrate this let's go into like a stats stats and let's create a simple default on nix with i mean let's do the the simple thing from earlier where we had a thing like f and then i and uh, uh, integer to string i and then we have a let's do like this where a equals f0 and b equals f0 and then let's evaluate this with next show stats equals one okay yeah so now we can see the stats of the next evaluation here so we can see well cpu time this is the only number in here that's uh, that varies over time so if i evaluate this again it is different now uh, but yeah everything else i believe should be static so you can evaluate it multiple times i'm not sure about the gc the gc does i think collect garbage if you don't have enough memory uh, i'm not sure if it influences this one it might influence this one Oh yeah, the heap size you can change, uh, I believe, from from the start. But yeah, so in here we can see things like the number of thanks that were allocated. So it says three thanks here. Let's try to find these thanks. So we can see earlier I said we have let in definitions create a thank. So we have this one is a thank. So that's one. Let's annotate this and say uh, thank number one. Um, and then we have uh, attributes. Uh, each attribute in an attribute set creates a thanks. So we have this one creates one, and this one creates one, and that's our three thanks. So that's number two, and this is number three. But now let's let's mess a bit with this, and let's say um, instead of zero here, let's pass a one plus one. All right, and what happens? Oh, we can see there's four thanks now and so even though we didn't add an attribute set uh, attribute or a new function there's another thank now 
that's if you go back to so the thing I'm talking about now is mostly explained this in this next performance uh, wiki page uh, but yeah so there's Latin expressions uh, attribute sets lists but also function application uh, can create a thunk but it's only in cases where uh, the value isn't a, a kind of primitive type you can you can see this page for for more details um, but yes a one plus one it passes this to the function as an argument uh, as a thunk so but we that this means we can also avoid these things now wait, wait. One yeah. plus one is a thunk, or f of one plus one is a thunk. Uh, this one is a thunk. One plus one, or it creates a thunk from, from the, this. The argument of function evaluation creates a thunk. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. uh, okay. but only in this case. So this is a kind of primitive type, so it doesn't do it for that. Um, but yeah, we uh, we could also now kind of mess a bit with this and say, okay, what if we Okay, we, we do this, but we don't evaluate this integer anymore here. Actually, let's see the stats now. So we have number of things, and we have um, number avoided here. And so apparently, if we, we avoided three things, and if we try to find these, so I believe one of them is here. So it tried to create a thunk for this argument as well, but it failed because it's a, a primitive argument. Um, Maybe here as well, we have a function call and this i, and the i is a variable. Variables also don't create new things. Um, so I guess, yeah, the calls this function twice. Um, I believe that's probably it. And so, okay, what if we... We'll, we'll create thanks for both function application and attribute set value. Yes, uh, I think so. Um, well, would it count as avoided if you have like you you need to create a thunk for attribute value and for function application, right? But here we have attribute value uh, is already a thunk, so we probably will not create a new thunk, right? Maybe that is um, as a, oh, you mean like if we did uh, this, so like x equals f zero, and then like this. Yeah. Yeah. So if we if we try to walk through this, so we have let's count the number of things. So we we have one here. Uh, we have two here because it's a a Latin. Um, and actually here it also tries to create a thunk. It if it can't create well if that's a primitive value or a variable then it can create one. In this case it's not a pre primitive value so it should create another thunk. That's two. Then here we have an attribute set that is three. We have another one that is four. And actually, no, here it tries to create one, um, but it can't because, well, it doesn't because it's a variable. So this actually is still three, well, like this. But then we also have the one plus one. That's another one. So um, let's uh, signal this with like a four right here. Okay, and then uh, the number of avoided ones. So. Well, we have this is one, so let's let's try to number avoid it. We have one, uh, which is right here. We have, uh, and then the same ones from earlier, this two string call. So one plus one plus one. Let's see if this is right. So three avoided and three thanks. Oh, four thanks and uh, four avoided. Did we miscount somewhere? Um, F that mm -hmm, two that's one that's two that's three maybe it does create one here that shouldn't be maybe i'm maybe i messed up a bit here uh, we have integer we have two string uh that gets interest like a st with those oh. Oh, we, we, we do have one more avoided here, I believe, because this is a variable. Uh, what, what did you say? Uh, can you uh, generate like HT representation with funks somehow? Unfortunately not. Uh, the only kind of... We can use an instantiate parse, but that doesn't really 
do anything like that. Um, oh, what we could do. So there's one other kind of trick to look into Nix evaluation. And that is using, I'm going to uh, rely on auto completion here. Uh, trace, uh, trace, um, okay, I'm, I'm going to have to look at the man page. I hope it's, no, it's not documented. Nix uh, instantiate uh, trace. It might be functions. There's a way to trace all the function calls. Oh, Nix count calls. That might be, oh, and here, this is how you can change the initial heap size, um, which we saw earlier in the in the options. But yeah, Nix count calls. Uh, what if we do that? Let's instantiate eval. Um, count calls, it doesn't really do anything. I think I set that in the environment like that. Count calls equals one. Yeah, that doesn't really do anything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rely on my wrapping skills through the uh, through the next source code function. Maybe we could have stuff as well for it to output number of calls. Oh, that could be it. Yeah, let's try that. Um, but here, this is the the option I was looking for: trace function calls. And is this documented in next.conf? It seems to be next.conf option trace function calls. Oh yeah, it is here. Next evaluator will trace every function call. Next will print a logs uh, message at the vomit level for every function entrance and function exit. Um, okay, uh, default is false. That's good. So let's try. Well, let's try doing the other thing first. Next our um, stats. Next count calls, and then let's also do the. Uh, expert nix uh, show stats equals one. Then I shouldn't need to do the variables in the beginning anymore, like this. Um, oh, attributes is that a new one? I haven't. Is that the is that the one we are? Oh, here functions that looks relevant. Uh, count two. We have column seven, uh, line two. So that's the F function. I've never seen this one, but that seems also fairly useful. Okay, but let's also enable the option uh, trace function calls. True. Okay, now we can see this here. That's that's useful. Well, it's actually pretty hard to read, but uh, I, I've seen people create flame drafts from this. Uh, although Nix flame graphs are not very useful because of lazy evaluation. And maybe I can direct someone to that uh, by, I think it's in the contrib here. Stack collapse. Um, yeah, that, that looks somehow relevant. Oh, trace function calls is also, right, this is also a thing. Uh, but yeah, okay, this can create a flame graph. So yeah, if you're interested in giving that a go, here it is. Um, but yeah, if if we could try to go back to this one, well, we can see the function here is called twice. Uh, the built-in apparently isn't counted. I'm not sure where we are missing a thank here, uh, but I'm not gonna worry that much about it. That's kind of generally how it works. And now we can also, I mean, let's go back to this here, f0, uh, zero, f0. Zero. And uh, let's clean this up a bit. I Okay, and so let's do an evals. Uh, eval, you need uh, to trace. Strict. I think it's in the environment. Oh, maybe not in this shell, actually. And I have a mistake in here. What is it? Oh, I. I oh, right. That's what you meant with trace. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so here, uh, right, we have five thanks now and seven, uh, six avoided. Um, where did those come from? Oh, maybe the, the trace here, actually. Yeah, we have like this as one argument and this is another. Uh, this might count for some. 
Uh, but now we, we can avoid, hopefully, at least one with by doing this. And uh, thanks three avoided five. Okay, yeah, so we could avoid some thanks. And thanks notably do have to allocate something, so that's why you generally want to avoid them. And uh, they're also not super performant. Okay, um, yeah, that's that's about evaluation performance. Maybe I mean let's let's take a look at the next packages. Um, so maybe let's go into next packages and look at like hello. So let's do oh let me am I in a yeah I'm a bit stash dash u. Okay, now let's do a. Well, let's just do an instantiate. We we are only interested in evaluation performance right now, so we don't need to build anything. So if we try to do hello and we have the uh, for completeness, let's do nix uh, show stats. Or actually, that's can clear the environment by just re-entering. I'm sure there's a key or a command for that which I forgot. Um, but yeah, so nix uh, shows reset. Also resets uh, environment variable. Oh, unset. You can Does unset it? environment variables one by one with it. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, then maybe re-entering might almost be easier. Uh, next show stats, and um, oh yeah, we let's also use next show stats path. So it output the JSON uh, on STDR, I believe, before, but with show stats path, you can output it to a file. So let's do stats.json here. Let's instantiate uh, dash a hello. All right, so we evaluated hello. And now we have stats.json here, and we can pipe this into JQ and uh, right. Uh, for example, let's get the CPU time. Dot CPU time. All right, and now we could also do kind of like, we can automate this a bit more. Uh, I wonder, can I figure out how to use Hyperfine in five minutes? Probably. Especially when I have a command like this before, which shows me that it's just a simple command. Um, although this, uh, actually, yeah, I guess Hyperfine does its own measurement of the time. So actually we don't need to do the CPU stats thing here. But uh, since I started talking about it, let's let's finish it as well. So I'm just going to instantiate hello and hyperfine is just a kind of very simple way to benchmark commands. And in this case, it ran it uh, 10 times, figured out the minimum, maximum, mean, standard deviation, things like that. Uh, personally, when I kind of want to go a bit more low level, I just do like, like this, you can see it in my, in my history as well. Uh, so I just do kind of a, uh, let's, do it a hundred times and then uh, right we do the next show stats equals one and then I'm just gonna do next instantiate dash a hello here done and oh right next show stats path equals stats dot json and now after this I wanna do uh, I guess jq dot cpu time and then into times and append two times okay well, actually, not a hundred times. That's a bit too much. Um, also, JQ from somewhere. JQ from somewhere. Oh, that's a good point. Yes, thanks. Stats dot JSON. All right, run five times. So we have times in here now. And now another kind of very simple CLI utility to analyze a bunch of times is. Oh, and NS is next shell, by the way. Um, shouldn't use abbreviations uh, while here, is STA, short for stats. And you can just pipe the, the kind of times into here, and then you get back in like tab separated values, the, the number, the minimum. It's a bit hard to read, to be honest. And I think there's also an option to do like transpose, it might be useful. Transpose. Yeah, so you get the, the mean, the standard, deviation and standard error, things like that. But yeah, we're deviating a bit from next year, but this is how you can kind of evaluate things and measure them a bit, analyze them. Um, and then also 
that's right. That's related to how the evaluation performance is measured for PRs. So if we go to like, let's pick one that's finished evaluation down here. Um, so we, we can go down here for every PR. Uh, Offborg does a this one in evaluation performance report. So we can go into details here. And we can see all of these stats here that we saw earlier in the JSON. And so, well, this stat here, you don't have to pay a lot of attention to this one. Sometimes it's way off, uh, but this is just because, um, well, it takes a long time and the server might be doing a lot of other things at the time. Um, so yeah, you, you really need to run this like many times to, to get a reasonable estimate of the uh, of, of the standard deviation. Uh, but yeah, down here, this is kind of useful. I don't think this is uh, kind of easily made accessible, this, this kind of generation of tables here. That would be useful. Um, yeah, and maybe just uh, since I'm talking about like, how is this even implemented? Uh, the offboard repository, oh, I'm in a different tab now. Uh, of work here uh, that has the implementation of the CI for PRs and Next packages. It is written in Rust, so oftentimes you can't, well, and fairly well abstracted, so actually it's sometimes hard to find strings in here when you try to. Uh, if you go into the source, uh, we might try to find uh, the Next show stats. Look at that, is here. Um, so next stats, uh, this actually looks maybe more like it would do thing. Okay, yeah, I guess it's implemented here. Yeah, we can see the errors here. That's, that's neat. Uh, but yeah, so you can't directly use this anywhere. Yeah, um, let's see, we have like one more minute. Is there a question or anything someone wants to ask? Do you know of some PR with nice numbers here? Like oh, yeah, I do. Something? Yeah, check meta. Um, yeah, this one was... Um, oh, I'm not sure. Okay, definitely. Well, this PR had a... Previously had one. Uh, I'm gonna... Uh, is it here? think it's here yeah here so I it changed some default from false to true which caused the 8.5 percent increase in memory oh and this uh, can I see the results here of Borg evaluation performance report yeah here so this is a uh, this is kind of not great so here you can see um, well and by GC total bytes I like to use this one kind of well, this is the total number of bytes allocated. And you can see, well, it's not 8.5. I'm not sure where I got the 8.5% number from now. Um, but yeah, it increased. 100 gigabytes? E, that is in bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes. That sounds, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Uh, it's, it's quite a beast. And I think the server has probably like, either it has a whole bunch of, um, uh, what is it? swap or it has and i think it definitely has uh, 64 gigabytes of memory uh but yeah then it just has to swap out some i guess but yeah so this this would be kind of bad numbers and and also like every like there's a lot of prs to nix packages if if pr even increases things by one percent then right if you go by like uh like pc quick calculation 0.1, so 1% increase over, I don't need parents here, over like 100 PRs, and suddenly you have a 200 or 170% increase. So that's up fast. So you need to watch the performance here and there. Um, but yeah, sometimes we also have PRs that uh, make it faster. Um, I don't have an example of that, but that exists too here and there. All right, uh, I think that's it. Uh, I'm gonna uh, let's end it for today. And just as a brief reminder again, 
we have the poll on this course for a new time for the next hour. Please vote if you're interested. All right, thanks for joining and uh, see you next time.